Hello and welcome. You're watching the news on Sunset TV with me, Bhavna Nayar. Up ahead, the important stories from in and around the world, all the parliamentary updates and much more. But first up, the top five headlines. Health Minister Mandavia reviews COVID situation, instructs administration to be vigilant, asserts that government is ready to deal with any situation. Government has a zero-tolerance policy against drugs, asserts Home Minister Amit Shah in his reply to a discussion under Rule 193 in Lok Sabha, 12 Chhattisgarh communities included in scheduled tribes list. Rajya Sabha approves anti-piracy bill that aims to make maritime trade effective and safe, returns appropriation bills after discussion. Intense cold period of Chilai Kala begins in Kashmir, entire North India in the grip of cold wave, warning of dense fog till Saturday. And America to give $1.8 billion aid to Ukraine that includes Patriot missiles and precision target bombs. Ukrainian President Zelensky to visit US. And after those top headlines, a quick look now at some speed news. Innovations for Defence Excellence, IDEX, the flagship initiative of Department of Defence Production, signs its milestone 150th contract. Cryptocurrencies threaten macroeconomic and financial stability. RBI Governor cautions about the unregulated currency. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs kickstarts ground survey of pay jewel survection in 500 Amrut cities to assess quality and quantity of water. Action taken against 2,724 corrupt officials, 248 cases sanctioned, prosecution in 2021, Union Minister Dr. Jitendra Singh tells in Lok Sabha. Indian Forest Service probationers call on President Murmu at Rashtrapati Bhavan. President underscores significance of forest in social, cultural and economic development of the country. Stakeholders of terror ecosystem will face action, asserts JNK LG Manoj Sinha. NHRC team inquires into which tragedy in Saran and Sivan districts of Bihar visits affected families. Taliban ban women from universities in Afghanistan spark global condemnation. Two killed thousands of households left with electricity after 6.4 magnitude earthquake in Northern California. And Elon Musk says he will quit as Twitter CEO if he finds someone foolish to take the job after 57.5% of users vote that he should step down. And now the big story of the day. COVID is not over yet and the government is prepared to deal with any situation. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia said today after a high-level meeting to review the COVID-19 situation in the country. The health minister directed officials to be alert and strengthen surveillance. The meeting was held in view of a sudden spurt in cases in some parts of the world, including Japan, US, South Korea, Brazil and China. On Tuesday, the Union Health Ministry had urged all states and union territories to ramp up the whole genome sequencing of positive samples to keep track of emerging variants. Crowding may have to wear a mask. अंदर भी अगर क्राउडिंग है तो वहां भी हमने मास्क लगाना है इसी प्रकार सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग की जो एडवाइजरी अभी तक है आपके समक्ष उसका ख्याल रखिए एंड अगेन देयर दोज विद कोमोबिलिटीज दोज विद अ पर्टिकुलर एज सीनियर सिटीजंस उनके लिए ये और भी जरूरी है और ये हमें अपनी नॉर्मल लाइफ को लीड करते हुए नॉर्मल काम करते हुए इनका ये प्रिकॉशन हमें लेनी है and that was the advisory by Union Health Ministry. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia has urged Congress leader Rahul Gandhi to consider suspending the Bharat Jodo Yatra if adherence to COVID protocols cannot be followed. In a letter addressed to Rahul Gandhi and Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot on Tuesday, Mandavia said three MPs from Rajasthan had raised concerns over spread of coronavirus during the Congress Yatra. These MPs include P.P. Chaudhary, Nihal Chand and Devji Patel. The minister urged Gandhi and Gehlot to take prompt action, keeping in view the request made by the three MPs in Rajasthan. Listen in. 
राजस्थान में भारत जोड़ो यात्रा में गए हुए कई लोगों को कोविड पॉजिटिव पाया गया है हिमाचल के सम्मान्य मुख्यमंत्री जीपा भी भारत जोड़ो यात्रा में गए थे उसके बाद उसमें भी कोविड पॉजिटिव पाया गया और उसको देखते हुए राजस्थान में कोविड ना फैले इस विषय के लिए आप कुछ कार्यवाही करिए And now let's look important news from today's parliament session now. Union Home Minister Amit Shah called the drug menace a serious problem that is destroying generations. He added that profits made from the racket are utilized for terrorism as well. He responded to a short duration discussion in the Lok Sabha on drug abuse problem in the country and steps taken by the government to control it. He urged all states and union territories of India to fight together against the problem. I want to say that the Narendra Modi government is not the case of the drug and 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 the case of the drug. और हम सख्ताई से इसको जीरो तक ले जाने के लिए हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं। अमित शाह स्ट्रेस दैट द मोदी गवर्नमेंट हैज जीरो टॉलरेंस पॉलिसी टुवर्ड्स ड्रग्स एंड वाउ टू पुट बिहाइंड बार्स ड्रग ट्रेडर्स हाउस वे वे बिग इन द नेक्स्ट टू इयर्स। ही स्ट्रेस द नीड टू स्टॉप द एंट्री ऑफ ड्रग्स He stressed the need to stop the entry of drugs through borders, ports, and airports. मिल करे लड़ाई लड़नी पड़ेगी क्योंकि इसका परिणाम लाना है तो बहु आयामी लड़ाई लड़े बगैर ये परिणाम नहीं आ सकता है परंतु मैं आज ये बात सदन के सामने स्वीकार करना चाहता हूँ कि जहाँ तक ड्रग के खिलाफ लड़ाई का सवाल है देश की सभी राज्य सरकारों ने केंद्र सरकार के साथ कंधे से कंधा मिलाकर लड़ाई को गंभीरता के साथ लड़ा मूविंग अहेड यूनियन मिनिस्टर अर्जुन मुंडा मूव द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स ऑर्डर फिफ्थ अमेंडमेंट बिल 2022 फॉर कंसिडरेशन इन द लोकसभा द बिल अमेंड्स द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स ऑर्डर नाइनटीन फिफ्टी टू मॉडिफाई द लिस्ट ऑफ शेड्यूल ट्राइब्स इन छत्तीसगढ़ Replying to the discussion on the bill, Union Minister for Tribal Affairs Arjun Munda pointed out that the Ministry for Tribal Affairs was formed only in 1999 to 52 years after independence. Post his reply, the bill was passed via voice vote in the Lok Sabha. What is the purpose of this mantra? This is not a mantra. It has been said that tribal affairs is a matter of the people's affairs. Tribal affairs is a matter of the people's affairs. जनजातीय मामले जिस पर एक होलिस्टिक अप्रोच होना चाहिए कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव प्लान होना चाहिए और पूरे देश में बिखरे हुए जो जनजातीय समाज अपने संस्कृति के लिए विख्यात है उनको न्याय मिलना चाहिए उनके डिस्टिंक्ट कल्चर को प्रोटेक्ट करना चाहिए उनकी भाषा संस्कृति और परंपराओं की जो जीवंतता है उसको बरकरार रखना चाहिए और इसलिए एक मंत्रालय 1999 में आजादी के कितने वर्षों के बाद अब इसका यदि हमारे अधीर रंजन जी को मैं कहूंगा कि खुद से गणना कर ले कि 1947 में देश आजाद होता है और जनजातीय मामलों के मंत्रालय जब देश रत्न अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी इस देश के प्रधानमंत्री बनते हैं तो ये मंत्रालय बनता है पार्लियामेंट हैज पास द मैरिटाइम एंटी पायरेसी बिल व्हिच प्रोवाइड्स फॉर स्ट्रिंजेंट पनिशमेंट टू दोस कन्विक्टेड ऑफ सच क्राइम्स द राज्यसभा ऑन वेंसडे पास बाय वॉइस वुड द मैरिटाइम एंटी पायरेसी बिल 2022 व्हिच वाज मूव्ड फॉर कंसीडरेशन एंड पासिंग बाय एक्सटर्नल अफेयर्स मिनिस्टर एस जयशंकर द बिल वाज पास बाय द लोकसभा ऑन मंडे Replying to a debate on the bill, Jay Shankar said that it will help the country in having international cooperation to deal with piracy. 
Honorable Chairman, sir, I rise to move that the maritime anti-piracy... I would uh, submit to you, Honorable Chairman, sir, that commits, attempts to commit, participates, organizer, director, are all three different types of actions with a different level of gravity and therefore a different level of punishment if uh, found guilty. Uh, there was uh, the issue also about uh, who will investigate this. Uh, I think it's very clear from the legislation intended, the bill proposed, uh, that the police officer is the key uh, person. Uh, and we will obviously assume that in such cases they have the competence to do that. Parliament has approved the first batch of supplementary demands for grants allowing the government to spend net additional 3.25 lakh crore rupees in the current financial year. The Rajya Sabha returned the appropriation number 4 and number 5 bills to Lok Sabha after discussion. Replying to the discussion, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said the government is keeping a close watch on inflation to ensure there is no surge in prices. She highlighted the targeted approach in pulling out the economy from pandemic disruptions without slipping into recession. We have come up with a supplementary demand for grants, which are essentially for ensuring that there's food security. There's also enough to be given for fertilizers, which is so critical for our farmers. And therefore, the items under which we have come with the supplementary demand all are in the direction of ensuring that the Indian economy, particularly the poor, the farmers, and so on, are given enough support. So this is essentially a budget with supplementary demand which keeps the necessary support which has to be given for those who need it. And therefore, I'm sure, I've heard many people say that they don't uh, disagree with the supplementary demand and they are fully in support of it. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, uh, you know, uh, support. The minister also said private investment capex is taking place in India because of favourable policies like PLI and cited few examples. Private sector capex announcements are up 35% year on year and 53% above pre-COVID levels. This is a report from one of the equity research companies. Financial year 23, India private sector capex is seen to be driven by chemicals and renewable energy. This is an observation by one of the institutes which look, uh, looks at equities research. And finally, on 14th December 2022, the Mahindra Group has announced 10,000 crore of investments in EVs in Maharashtra. So, private sector capex is happening. Rajya Sabha Chairman Jagdeep Dhankar on Wednesday disallowed notices under Rule 267 and clarified that if the occasion warrants, he will allow notices under Rule 267. The notices tendered today did not fulfil required conditions. I am constant to observe that in spite of a very comprehensive ruling, in spite of thorough focus on the rule, its requirements, the compliance could not have been more desirable. It is lacking the RDG on every element of Rule 267. I have carefully gone through your notice, given the high stature you have, and long parliamentary career. I will appeal to you as a very senior member of the House to kindly bestow attention and help me develop wholesome practices so that we are in compliance of the rules. I can assure the members, because they are taken, I stand yesterday, that my predecessors have invoked 267 during their respective tenures. A number has never been double digit during their five-year tenure. But I am not a statistics-driven person. If there will be an occasion, I will invoke the rule. If there will be no occasion, I will not invoke it. Because I am repository of your wisdom, your conscience, and your rights.
News now of cold wave that is gripping the nation. Kashmir's harshest winter period, July Kala, has begun with the mercury dropping several notches below the freezing point in many places. Pehelgam recorded the lowest night temperature at minus 6.2 degrees Celsius. Several places in Kashmir witnessed their coldest nights of the season so far. Fringes of many water bodies, including the Dal Lake, froze. Water in taps also froze due to the extreme cold. Srinagar recorded a minimum temperature of minus 4.2 degrees Celsius last night, while Gulmarg in Baramula district recorded a low of minus 4.6 degrees Celsius. Minus 4.4 degrees Celsius temperature was recorded in North Kashmir's Kupwara, minus 4.2 degrees Celsius in Kazigun, and minus 2.4 degrees Celsius in Kokarnag. The meteorological department has forecast mostly rains or light snowfall in some parts of Kashmir around Christmas. Chilai Kala is a 40-day period when a cold wave grips Kashmir and temperatures drop considerably. There are maximum chances of snowfall during this period in most areas, especially in the higher reaches. The spell of Chilai Kala will end on January 30th. And thick fog covered the national capital and adjoining areas today, lowering visibility of 40, 400 meters and affecting road and rail traffic. Around 18 trains were running late by one and a half to five hours. However, an official confirmed that flight operations at the Delhi airport were normal. On Tuesday night, three flights were returned or diverted to the Delhi airport due to bad weather in Chandigarh, Varanasi and Lucknow. Cold waves and dense fog conditions were observed in many parts of Punjab, Himachal, Haryana, Chandigarh, Delhi and Uttar Pradesh. The meteorological department has issued dense fog and cold wave alerts for North India till Saturday. Dense fog and cold wave conditions continue at Atari Vaga border. The BSF personnel are braving the bitter cold and patrolling the fence at the Atari Vaga border. And news now from across the nation. In a written reply to a question in the Rajya Sabha, Minister of State for Health and Family Welfare, Bharati Praveen Pawar said that monkeypox cases are on the decline across the world since mid-August this year. Most cases detected to date have been mild and treatment for the disease remains largely supportive, Pawar added in her reply. Three cases of Omicron, sub-variant BF.7, apparently the strain driving China's current surge of COVID cases have been detected in India so far. The first case of BF.7 in India was detected in October by Gujarat Biotechnology Research Centre. So far, two cases have been reported from Gujarat, while one case has been reported from Odisha. Border Security Force troops shot down a drone that entered India from Daouke border outpost in Amritsar sector from the Pakistan side on the international border on Tuesday evening. A search operation has been launched in the area. Further information is awaited. Security personnel fired six rounds from their INSAS rifles and downed a drone. Other organizations like the G20 may step up to take a more prominent role in international affairs than the United Nations if the global body fails to introduce reforms in the United Security Council. Ruchira Kamboj, the permanent representative of India at the United Nations said, speaking on the issues reformed multilateralism and counter-terrorism during the December presidency of India at the UNSC, Ms. Kamboj said that the reform reformation of the United Nations is the most complex process of the UN system. Dr. Kartika Rajiv, staff scientist at the Rajiv Gandhi Center of Biotechnology, has been selected for the Ben Barris Spotlight Award 2022. The Ben Barris Spotlight Awards has been instituted by scientific journal eLife to perpetuate the memory of American neurobiologist Dr. Ben Barris, a transgender researcher who advocated equality in science. Dr. Kartika is working on human pathogens, Chameleidia trachomatis. Her research focuses on how these pathogens evade the host of immune system. Slipping into a very short break here, lots more coming up on the other side. Do stay tuned to Sansa TV for more news. Bharat. 
संपूर्ण विश्व में नेतृत्व की भूमिका निभाएगा जी ट्वेंटी इज गोइंग टू बी अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अकेजन दिस इज ऑल्सो बेनिफिशियल टू द स्टेट हाउ एक्ट इज रिलेटेड टू दी कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अमेंडमेंट क्षमता और कार्य के हिसाब से लोगों को मौका मिलता है आपको हम अपनी ओर से पूरा पूरा सहयोग देंगे इस स्कीम में कितना पैसा देने का योजना बनाया ये पता अगर एनुअल देखा जाए तो थर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड फोर्टी फाइव आई थिंक बीन बोल्ड इनफ टू एक्सेप्ट दैट द स्टैंडिंग कमेटी हैज मेड इन इम्प्रूवमेंट ऑन द ओरिजिनल बिल Welcome back after the break you're watching the news a look now at the latest developments from the conflict zone of Russia Ukraine Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky embarked on a visit to Washington today for a summit with president Joe Biden he will also address the US Congress in his first known trip outside the country since Russia's invasion began in February Zelensky said on his Twitter account that the visit was to strengthen resilience and defense capabilities of Ukraine and discuss cooperation between his country and the United States. The visit comes as US lawmakers are set to vote on a year-end spending package that includes about 45 billion US dollars in emergency assistance to Ukraine. The US is also set to approve the delivery of advanced patriot missile systems to Ukraine. The Kremlin said today that Russia saw no chance of peace talks with Kyiv. Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov stressed that nothing good would come from Ukrainian President Zelensky's trip to Washington. Peskov warned that continued western arms supplies to Ukraine would lead to deepening of the conflict that could backfire on Kyiv. Ukrainian President Zelensky said that after a visit to the besieged city of Bakhmut that it is a fortress that now protects Donbas and all of Ukraine Zelensky met with troops in the eastern city during his visit on Tuesday and praised them as heroic defenders Zelensky also confirmed that he had visited other places in the Donetsk region he said that there is pain ruins and graves all round the so called russian peace The United Nations is working to expand the export of Russian and Ukrainian grain and fertilizer from from Black Sea ports. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said on Monday. He also added that United Nations is doing everything possible for a peaceful solution to the Ukraine crisis by the end of 2023. Guterres emphasized that the United Nations will continue to provide a platform for dialogue between Russia and Ukraine. and news now from across the globe South Korean president Yoon Suk Yeol said on Wednesday that labor reforms will be a top priority for his government's drive to improve the way the country works Yoon who took office early this year has repeatedly said his government would strictly apply the law to labor relations in a country with a long record of fractious industrial relations A news now from other parts of the world. Ambulance workers in Britain began a 24-hour strike on Wednesday seeking pay hikes to tide over the 10.7% inflation in November. The government advised people not to play contact sports, take unnecessary car trips or get drunk in order to reduce their risk of needing an ambulance. Unions pledged to respond to life-threatening calls but officials said they couldn't guarantee everyone who needed an ambulance would get one. Foreign ministers of Australia and China met in Beijing on Wednesday to restore high-level political contacts and return stability to a relationship that has undergone major turbulence in recent years. Australian Minister Penny Wong's visit comes 
on the anniversary of 50 years of official diplomatic relations between the two nations. Her visit has raised hopes of an end to Chinese import blocks and the possible free of two Australian citizens detained in China. Canada has processed a record 4.8 million immigration applications till November, nearly twice the 2.5 million process during the same period last year. Canada said immigration is critical to its economy and our communities. It added that the government had reduced its pandemic blockages by nearly half a million. Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba was elected the parliamentary party leader of the ruling Nepali Congress party, making him the candidate for the post of Prime Minister. 76-year-old Deoba has served as Prime Minister for a record fifth term. He defeated his challenger party General Secretary Gagan Kumar Thapa by 39 votes, securing 64 votes. Pakistan's northwest province saw yet another militant attack on a police post in Peshawar on Wednesday. The incident comes just a day after dozens of armed militants stormed the police station in the South Waziristan district of Khyber Pakhtun Khawa province. The militants armed with heavy artillery attacked the police post in the Achini area of Peshawar. No casualties were reported. And now let's see some sports bus. Australia beat India by 54 runs in the fifth and final women's T20I to take the five-match series to 4-1. Chasing 197 to win, India were bowled out for 142 with Deepthi Sharma top scoring with a 34-ball 53. Australia's Ashley Gardner was declared the player of the match and series in the T20I series against India. Gardner made 66 not out of just 32 balls and took two wickets in the fifth match. She scored 115 runs and took seven wickets in the series. India to take on Bangladesh in the second test of the two-match series beginning tomorrow at Mirpur. Indian captain, K uh, captain KL Rahul picks up hand injury on eve of test. Overlooked for India due to poor form, Ajinkya Rahani sends a strong message with a double turn in for Mumbai against Hyderabad in Ranji Trophy, scores an attacking 204 off 261 balls. And continuing good form from the previous season, Mumbai Sarfaraz Khan scores 126 not out against Hyderabad. Mumbai declares first innings at 651 for 6. And with that, it's a wrap of today's bulletin. Keep watching Sansa TV for more news and updates. Thank you for watching. Good night. Namaskar. No force can stop the change whose time has